Bruce Feldman, welcome back to Tuscaloosa. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for having me on, Ryan. It's good to talk to you. Absolutely. Can you take just a minute and, and invite people to connect with you uh, on theathletic.com? Because I know a lot of people have heard about the website, uh, but talk about how they can get in touch and how they can subscribe to what you guys are putting together. There's an all-star lineup. Uh, well, thank you. It's just to go to either my uh, Twitter handle, which is just uh, Bruce Feldman CFD, or go to theathletic.com, uh, and you'll see the tab for college football. Um, the story I uh, I did uh, yesterday, it's gotten a ton of uh, tr- you know good traction, um, was out of the Elite 11, had a chance to basically be in the, in the room. It was a late Friday night when both First, it was Jalen Hurts, and then Tua Tagovailoa were going to speak to the high school quarterbacks there. And just to hear how they approach things and have handled things um, was pretty pretty fascinating because, you know, I'm sitting like literally four feet behind Tua as Jalen is talking about how he was able to process his own personal feelings and competitiveness uh, versus the way the national title game played out and how is how he was able to handle it. It was, you know, the kid is way more mature than any 19 year old you're typically going to meet. And, um, just to see how they were, you know, they addressed people, how they talked about it, how they were interacting with each other. Um, you know, however this is going to play out, I, you know, I couldn't have any more respect for, for these kids and they are kids for how they handle things. I mean, it's just, it's, you couldn't ask for much more, I think. Can you share a little bit of what that, those conversations, I don't want to invite you to tell all because I want people to go to the website and read the story, but can you share us a little bit of a tease of maybe some things that was said? Yeah. So in, in the first case, when, uh, when Jalen walks, walks up into the front of the room, it's at this, it's at this ballroom inside the Torrance, uh, California Marriott. And it's, 1030 at night that all these guys have had a pretty full day. Many of them travel cross country to get there. And Jalen has asked about how he processes his own feelings as a quarterback with, you know, basically he got benched in the game and then here's his understudy comes in and turns out to be the hero. And then how does, you know, how do you handle it so well, uh, on the and national TV in front of a TV camera? And we all remember, you know, that he was, the big smile and, and what he said was just, you know, above and beyond what we would just say is just a, a really class reaction. And so he talked about uh, when he was at Alabama, it was a year ago, it was an off season. They went to an IMG summit. And one of the big pieces he took away from, from that was the message of to be able to lead, you have to love. And he, he got into, and people can read the story and get into more depth on how he explained how he took that message and why he was able to benefit from it and what it means actually to be a teammate and at that level and how he felt like it was the best thing he could do for the team because everything with this kid is team first. And as he is talking about this, and this went on for you know a few minutes, um, I'm watching to his reaction. He's nodding his head along, you know, like this is it. This is, I don't want to say the secret sauce, but that's pretty much what it is. You, know, you go into his answer on on how the leadership ties into to love and the re- relationships, and that's what's you know it's hard to I mean it's hard to uh, to replicate that if it's not real. And I think that you saw from his relationship with this with his teammate and with this team that it's very real. And I think that the way he articulated it, and then as as well as some other things that he talked about. You know, he's a kid who's probably going to graduate uh, in three years and uh, later this winter. And the degree will be in, in public relations, and he's worked with crisis communications. And and uh, how how he was talking to the, the high school kids about how they handle themselves. And it's through social media. And I thought that, um, you know, if you're an Alabama coach or fan or anybody who's ever interacted with him, certainly his parents, for the people back in Texas, I mean, you got to have so much pride in, in what what this kid has turned into as a as a nineteen year old. You know, we were talking about this a couple of days ago with John Parker Wilson, and we've spoken to you know whether we're talking about uh, AJ McCarron or Joe Namath, some of the guys from the legendary 
you know, in this state, Alabama football is really all we have. Uh, the attention is on the University of Alabama. We always like to say Nick Saban is the most important person in the state. And then the quarterback at Alabama receives a lot of pressure. I mean, think about an 18, 19 year old young man who immediately becomes the second most important guy in the and the focus of the state of Alabama is on his shoulder pads. Yeah, it's a lot. And one of the questions that was asked of Tua a little later in the night was, you know, A, how do you manage you become a, a national celebrity overnight, essentially, with what you do when you come off the bench and rally Alabama to that, you know, overtime win. But then the, one of the questions I thought was really telling was he was asked, you know, he's a freshman coming from the far west in Hawaii. And, you know, you may have some teammates who are married or have kids or, or you know, are four-year starters. Like, how do you fit in and, and lead that? And his answer was, was extremely simple, but also very illuminating. He goes, I just look at it as these guys grew up like little, as little kids playing the same game of football that I did, that I loved, you know, in Hawaii, back on the island. And, you know, it's basically like, I'm not going to get all this stuff twisted and see how, make it much more complicated than it needs to be. And I think within the context of that, I think that's why that kid is seems so unflappable. And I think what you and I may see, because we over, you know, overanalyze it. And it's, look, it's part of our job to overanalyze stuff. I think maybe we, maybe we don't have to find it that way, but that's the reality. Sure. Um, and that's why it works. I mean, it's almost as, when he said some of this stuff, it sunk in. I was like, I remember hearing once a great golfer say the difference between a great golfer and like the one who's who's okay and plays on the weekends is we don't think about all the things that could go wrong between tee shot to second shot, whereas you guys do. And I think that 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 focus and and the way Tua in this case is wired is a real talent. I'm just curious how much your opinion changed by watching these two interact and, and maybe if you went in with what your thoughts was going to happen and, and did that evening by watching these two interact change that at all? Um, it didn't in terms of, you know, who knows how it's going to play out for sure. Um, you know, in the coming months on the field, I think what I took away was, man, this kid's only 19 and he just seems so grounded. And so, um, I don't know, I peace with a lot of things. They just think that, you know, credit to his parents for, for what what they've raised. In Tua's case, um, the thing that's kind of the wow factor with him is I've seen him throw in person. I saw him throw at this thing last year, uh, two years ago. I've seen him, you know, in the national title game. Just being out there Friday and Saturday night watching him throw, um, there's still a wow factor when you see him throw the football just because the ball just explodes out of his hand. I mean, he is a really gifted, gifted kid. And uh, what will he become? What will this? What will the Alabama team be in 2018? I can't wait to see how it unfolds. But um, they have two great options there for Saban to pick from. Hey, Bruce, we had a caller earlier uh, this week who shared a, a really good uh, analysis of – Tua Tonga Valoa, and he said it he really reminds him of Ken Griffey swinging the baseball bat. You fall in love the way that he throws the football, and sometimes you even – I mean, it's just it, – it's it's fun to sit there and watch him throw because that lefty, you know, for one, I think we're more attracted to those guys when we talk about throwing the football and, you know, throwing the uh, the baseball or, or swinging, but you see that left at an arm. Is, is that a fair analogy of, of watching Ken Griffey swing the baseball bat? Yeah, where it looks like it's just natural. Yeah, it's just um, pure swing, you know, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's funny. His, his younger brother, little brother, uh, is committed to Alabama. Now, physically, he looks like he's a couple of years younger in terms of his body type, um, even though he's a class younger. But I, I, and I'm not like any great videographer or anything, but I had pretty good access to this. And so I took on my phone just a couple of videos of the two of them throwing not side by side, but basically make my position the same exact same spot on the field from where they are. And they are making the exact same type of throw. And obviously one is to his lefty, uh, Leah, his brother is righty. And you see, even in his little brother, there's a ton of juice in that arm and you can see 
really just how the ball explodes out of his hand as well. And so if people haven't seen it, just, I mean, you can, it's still somewhere on my Twitter timeline. You can check it out. Um, I wrote a little bit about it on Monday's story about the Elite 11. It's in there. It's kind of fascinating to watch how they both throw. Um, and it's an uncanny talent that they have. Bruce, I'm just curious, since we're removed and we're 86 days away from Alabama football, what are some of the big questions you have around this team? Well, the biggest one is obviously who's going to who's going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, I certainly want to see how you know a lot of staff shake up. You know, how is the new defense going to be? I think there's some really good guys on that staff, but I still want to you want know, to see it play out. And then the other thing is, you know, the schedule to me is much more manageable than it than it's been in past years. And people questioned it last year, but this year, you know, Florida State to me even you know I know that they had injuries and it was a down year. But when you trade Florida State, which came in the season top five, for a Louisville that I think is going to be a pretty average team, no Lamar Jackson, uh, and then you look at the rest of the schedule, and I think the SEC West, I think the SEC is pretty top-heavy. You have Alabama, you have Georgia, and I think Auburn's pretty good. But then you look at the rest of the SEC East, South Carolina is decent, and then the rest is pretty dreadful. I think... um, You know, you wonder, somebody is probably going to emerge as a surprise team. You wonder who that's going to be. Bruce, uh, I'm just curious to hear your opinion on this grad transfer rule and and maybe how this will affect uh, guys like Nick Saban here in the league. Uh, You know, I'm glad they did what they did, you know, because I just think, as Saban said the other day, you know, puts everybody in a bad spot because it's a bad look where, you know, it's not like players, student athletes, whatever you want, whatever the NCAA wants to call them can sign non-competes. I mean, you're not an employee. So, you know, if they've graduated, uh, I don't think you can ask much more of them in that setting. Um, and so will this open it up? I mean, the, the, the issue of tampering is certainly a, a real one, I think. Uh, will it become more free agency as, they, as the NCAA gets its arms around the transfer rules? I think this is still uncharted waters right now. Bruce Feldman, you can find him on theathletic.com, theathletic.com, where he's written a big piece about Tua Tungvalu and Jalen Hurts. Uh, they are also connect with him on the Twitter account, Bruce Feldman CFB, Bruce Feldman CFB. Bruce, thank you again for spending a couple of minutes with us here in Tuscaloosa. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks, Ryan.